what is the animal we're going to talk about today? It's a mud cat. Allegheny alligator. Lasagna lizard. Mud devil. Right. Snot otter. Of course, we're talking about the hellbender. Today, it's a great day for Tennessee. We've been working towards today and this week and last week for, for many years in the past. And we're doing a pilot project. We're doing a translocation project uh, where we're taking individuals from uh, sustainable populations and moving them into uh, other streams. The Hiawassee Project, the, the, we're prepping the animals obviously for translocation to the new habitats and so we're just trying to do a really thorough job with, you know, understanding the, 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 the movements and the habitat use of the animals at the sites where we're taking them from and then also at the release sites and so a lot of the research you do on translocation it usually is just moving animals and looking at how they move. Well, we wanted to actually know how does each animal respond to. The main concern is that compared to historic uh, levels, the Distribution has really shrunk. There are a lot of rivers that don't have them anymore that used to. And even the ones that do have them, uh, in many cases, they're, they're less abundant. Habitat degradation, I mean, deforestation, siltation, you know, runoff from streams, urbanization. There's so many issues that are declining so many aquatic species this day and age. And so uh, this species is declining nationwide. Uh, and it's declining in Tennessee. It has not reached the status of federally listed, but it did the last uh, iteration of this state, Tennessee state t and &E list, it did, was elevated to state threatened. And so uh, the state wildlife grant helps Tennessee and partners work with the species of greatest conservation need and hellbender has been a species of greatest conservation need for a long time. We check for um, BD, which is a chytrid fungus that the animals can get. And she's swabbing the toes because we found if they do get sick from BD, it seems to concentrate in the toes. It's a pathogen that really likes keratin and there is keratin in the toe tips, so that's probably why. But there's still a lot to be known about this uh, pathogen, especially in hellbenders. So I'm, I'm swabbing again to collect the bacteria that's on their skin, and so just like humans, amphibians have bacteria that helps them fight against pathogens, helps fight against infection, and some of these bacteria can actually help fight against that chytrid fungus. Well, we don't just want to look at just the kind of basic ecology, we want to look at the health of the animals too, and so we take some blood samples to look at, you know, overall anemia and things like other, other kind of parameters of health. And so we're trying to look at kind of a, the, a very kind of holistic view of the animals, not only like, do they live, that's a great question, but also, what other aspects might affect the animal's ability to persist over the long term? Where we've come from the last 15, 20 years is just trying to describe what we have, trying to work out what kind of populations we have in Tennessee. We're now at the point where we think we can restore populations. We can improve habitat in riparian zones, uh, in the watershed itself, so that there's more, more river miles that have good, good habitat and we can hopefully uh, increase populations either through wild translocations, as we're doing here, or cap captive breeding, done through uh, uh, Nashville Zoo and our partners there. So I, I, feel, I really feel like we're, we're moving, moving into that stage of trying to recover uh, existing populations and kickstart some new ones. There's a, probably f about five or six populations in Tennessee that are full recruiting and they're, they have equal distributions of life stages where they have larvae and juveniles and, and adults. But I would say in terms of sheer numbers, the Hiawassee provides Tennessee with its largest health under population. You know, representation across all the life stages. So we, we feel pretty comfortable taking animals from there to be able to move them to, to a new population. Uh, they're also a really unique salamander. They're, only, they're only the only living representative of their family in the United States. A hellbender, they're, they're a salamander, and so a lot of folks, when they ask me about them, they ask me if I've seen any lizards today. Well, so they are actually amphibians, and they're salamanders. And so they're actually North America's, North America's largest salamander. They can reach a total length of, I would say, the upper end possible would be, would be about two feet. Spend most of their time under large rocks. They're kind of, you know, that's kind of the unfortunate thing that I would say most folks in the general public don't see hellbenders because they're under a large rock. 
Yeah, they're, they're harmless. Um, they've got a painful bite if you put your finger in its mouth. So, uh, but other than that, um, you know, they're, they're a harmless uh, large, large salamander that you can enjoy and release. And, uh, and just let us know that, that you, you've seen one and tell us where you found it. Well, definitely catching a hellbender on a rod and reel can be a surprising experience. It's a pretty tough animal, but it's it's like um, it'd be like a fish that you intend to release. You know, get it back in the water as soon as you can. Um, if you can get the hook out without handling it at all, then that's great. But but yeah, it's it's like a fish that that you'd want to get back in the water quickly if it's if the hooks the hooks deep. Go ahead and cut the line and, 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 and get the hellbender back in the water. Working with hellbenders today, we have many partners that have come to the table to help conserve this species. And so having resources like Dr. Freak, Dr. Sutton out there doing the work, um, really uh, we need those folks to, to be able to do that because we simply don't have the capacity. So. Uh, we have access though to manage state wildlife grants and that's how a lot of the work that we, we've been seeing today was funded and it's like we do a lot of our work whether it's fish or deer uh, you know we rely on people at universities to be able to do that research that that informs us and, and allows us to uh, do the right things for, for uh, managing our wildlife. Sitica Creek provides some of the, probably some of the, the best, I'd say the upper end of water quality we have for good quality streams here in Tennessee. The water comes strictly from a national forest. Uh, a lot of the stream side buffers are intact. We have forested land cover on all sides of the stream, so we can pretty much guarantee that the threats that we're held vendors are experiencing in other parts of Tennessee and other parts of the range where the landscape has been degraded. You have a lot of siltation in the stream. You don't have that here in these streams. And then when you translocate them, it's going to be a while for them to find a habitat or a new kind of home range for them. And so Sitico is smaller, so it presents a little bit of a different challenge for the animals where probably the flow is going to be a little different and also the stream substrate. But in terms of, you know, the quality of habitat and food supply, Sitico Creek is going to be phenomenal habitat. And so we're talking about an animal that's been here literally for a very long time, and we're seeing this animal start to disappear in our lifetime. It's something that we really should take a second guess about, you know, what, what we're doing to our landscapes and kind of how we treat our river. I don't want them to disappear on my watch. And so um, anything that we can do to preserve the habitat through uh, land management, good farming practices, uh, that's a big deal. Long term, when you come back and monitor these sites, if you can not only find the, the individuals that were translocated here, but find recruitment, that's what we're looking for. If a couple years down the road uh, we can find juveniles, we've done our job.